So guys, it looks like we have a deadlock in Gauteng. It looks like the ANC and the DA are failing to reach an agreement. And this comes after the Premier of Gauteng, Banyazal Sufi, has been halted two times by Lutuli House because of this deadlock. I mean, if we go, if we go back and actually see how the people of Gauteng have actually voted, you can see in, the, in terms of support, the ANC got 34% meaning that the ANC got 28 seats, the DA got 27%, meaning that they got 22 seats. And because the provincial legislature has 80 members, the magic number is 41 seats. So if you take 28 seats from the ANC and 22 seats from the Democratic Alliance, these two political parties have 50 seats by themselves meaning that they can govern Gauteng without other political parties. But the DA said no. Now that we have a somehow working coalition in KZN, how about we bring in IFP? So IFP in Gauteng, it has one seat, meaning that this block of ANC, DA and IFP is going to have 51 seats. So the problem came with Panyazal Sufi actually allocating the members of the Executive Council. It, it is 10 seats. So Panyaza says that in these 10 seats, ANC is keeping 7 seats and we are giving DA 3 seats. So in terms of Panyazal Sufi, he's not even considering IFP. He says that if this deal is going to be between ANC and the DA, the DA will have to take 3 seats and the ANC will have to take 7 seats. And the DA says, no, man, you have 28 seats and we have 22 seats. How about we look at this thing, man, and try to actually apply proportionality of some sort? The DA actually suggested that the ANC take five seats, the DA takes four seats, and IFP take one seat. And Panyazal Sufi says, no, we are not going to go for that. We are not going to go for that. And just because you signed a statement of intent with ANC nationally, it doesn't mean that we are forced to work with the DA provincially. Panyazal Sufi understands that the ANC and EFF, Umkondoesis, it is easily 47 seats. If you take ANC's 28 seats, you take EFF's 11 seats, it's 39. You take Umkondo Wesizu as 8 seats, it's 47. Meaning that these three political parties can actually govern Gauteng without the DA. And by the look of things, it looks like this is exactly what Panyazal Sufi wants. Panyazal Sufi does not want to involve the DA in the matters of Gauteng. So the DA says it is fine. The DA says it is fine. Yesterday they did a press conference saying that if the ANC is not going to agree... With the matters of proportionality, they don't have a problem sitting on opposition benches. So it looks like the DA, it has already warmed up to the idea that they're going to be in opposition benches in Gauteng. Let's get the latest now from Zinigo Mshaba, who was attending that media briefing. Zinigo, uh, good evening to you. So very clear in the words of the Democratic Alliance that the ANC must treat the DA as a party that is almost the same size as the ANC is. Is there any word from the ANC camp as to what happens now? Good, good evening, Koli. Well, we have not heard any word from the ANC in terms of trying to counter what the Democratic Alliance, <clears throat> I beg your pardon, what that A has been, you know, updating us with in terms of the side of the story as to why the conversations uh, collapse between the two parties. So that has been the case here. Uh, we've been listening. To and, you, and you have to understand that Banyaz al Sufi and his guys in Gauteng, they actually are happy. They are happy right now with the fact that these talks have actually collapsed. They are happy with it. Because... If Panyaz al Sufi has to sideline the DA, that is going to make the year for Panyaz al Sufi. It is going to make the year for Panyaz al Sufi. So he's actually happy that these conversations are actually going nowhere. He's actually happy 
with the fact that the DA it is not the only option for the ANC in Gauteng. They can pick other members in Gauteng and they can easily form a government without the DA. This is what Banyazal Sufi is actually excited about. And the fact that the statement of intent that was signed nationally doesn't mean that these political parties that have agreed to work together nationally, they're going to have to work together provincially. This is again a win for Banyazal Sufi and ANC in Gauteng to the DS, they've been trying to explain to us, you know, the, the reasons why the negotiations today stalled and why there's still no agreement between the two parties. You'll understand that yesterday it was all about the African National Congress blaming and accusing the DA of being arrogant and saying that they don't want to be party, they don't want to play fair, they want everything for themselves. So today it's been the Democratic Alliance giving us insights into what exactly has been happening in the past two days. But now I'm joined, Mr. Mgambi, by uh, Mr. Solim Simango, who's the leader of the DA in the province. Uh, Mr. Simango, you've outlined the reasons behind why we still don't have an agreement between the DA and the ANC. But I think it's this point, it's been a long time. You've spent a lot of time as the two parties negotiating. What will be the deal breaker for the Democratic Alliance that will say, guys, this is it, we're marching away from this? We, you said in your statement that you're still open to negotiations, but when are you willing to close that door and what will be the deal breaker? Well, I think the people of South Africa must appreciate that uh, what we're going through in South Africa has never been done in South Africa. And in fact, the fact that, uh, you know, even mature democracies that go through um, these kind of things take months and months, uh, you know, to find solutions or to find uh, a workable uh, program of action. We, we, we have to then appreciate that what is actually uh, being done here is something that of a miracle that, uh, you know, in a couple of weeks you were able to then find each other at a national level and in KZN you were able to then find each other. And yet uh, here in Gauteng we're still battling for that, um, you know, to, to, to find consensus. And uh, we approach this from the... And because KZN was formed smoothly by the ANC, DA, IFP and NFP, people actually assumed that this is what is going to happen in Gauteng. Looks like, and forgetting that Gauteng is a different animal from day one with uh, good intentions and uh, you know engaging in negotiations in good faith and this is why we have been saying that uh, we will continue to do that until you know um, uh, we, uh, that is not reciprocated what we mean by that we have said that in in, in KZN there has been a, a proportionality that has been proposed by the ANC um, has been accepted by the DA has actually then uh, you know been accepted by the IFP this is how we are quickly able to then form um, government in uh, on a national level that is the case so if here we are proposing that then let's look at the issue of proportionality it cannot be that uh, you know a party that has 34 percent of uh, the seats wants to control 82 percent of the seats um you know in that particular space and this is where we are but that is not i mean like they like <laughs> the anc knows that it's insane they know that it's insane for them to to try to keep seven seats but they are doing all of these things just to frustrate the DA. <laughs> they know that the DA is going to be frustrated and they will never agree to this deal of taking three seats while the ANC keeps seven seats. They know very well. But they suggested it anyway. Why? Because they actually wanted the DA to walk out of the negotiations. Getting us anywhere, you are still in one position you were in long time ago, based on the very same reason that you are stating right now, that issue of fairness and assuring power according to the numbers as they reflected by the voters. So, hence I'm asking at what point are you willing to say, at the end of the day, guys, we are not finding each other. Let's agree to disagree and move on. Are you even considering, are you at the point where you are seeing that as a possibility? I think that's what I'm trying to get from you. Well, I think that that will be a possibility. Uh, we're not there as yet. We don't want to um, start, um, you know, projecting ourselves as uh, people who are at the door walking out. The people of Gauteng have given us 28%, and, you know, you, you need to be responsible of how you use that, and this is what we're trying to then do here. But at the point where we are 
um, you know, not finding each other and in terms of how we deal with the issues of proportionality. How do we find a voice in the government? We don't want to then go in government and then uh, disappear because the people that voted for us and the people of Gauteng in general are going to be asking, but you're part of government. What are you doing in that government? So we have to think about that while going into government. And this is what we are doing. But we are saying, should we not be able to then find each other in the next while? Um, you know, I'm sure, uh, you know, we'll make an announcement very, very soon that uh, this is now a, um, a time where we need to then call it a day. A, a, a very interesting situation is that during the election of, of Banyaza Lissoufi as the Premier, you voted with the ANC. You voted for the Speaker for the ANC, from the ANC. So two key positions, you, you, you voted with the ANC. Mm. They voted for your spe Deputy Speaker. Did you think it was premature maybe to get to that point of electing Premier and the Speakers without having an idea on how you'd constitute an executive? And should these conversations or negotiations break down, are you going to reflect on those elections maybe where you say we want to pull out of those positions and I will pull our votes back? No. Um, as I said, we engaged in this and, uh, with good faith. Um, you ah, but come on, man. You can't say that we engaged with this in good faith. If you are going to vote for Panyazal Sufi to be the premier of Gauteng, then you should have actually negotiated then before you voted for Panyazal Sufi. And say, Panyaza, if we are going to give you our votes, then you have to make sure that when that time comes, we're going to be on the same page. So you can't say you entered in these conversations with, with the good faith. This is the same thing that you remember last time when Helen Ziller said that ANC cannot invite people without the DA in the government of national unity because of what is this? Because of Article 24 or something like that. And the ANC next day went on television and said that we entered these negotiations with good faith understanding that the DA understands that this clause 24 is going to kick in after the government has been formed. And the DA said no. Is there in black and white that political parties that want to join the government of national unity, the ANC will have to go back with the political parties that are already in the government of national unity so that we can reach a consensus about the political parties that want to get inside the government of national unity. So it looks like right now, my guy over here is saying the same thing that ANC was saying. Point of the matter is that before the DA voted for Panyaza Lissouf, the DA should have made sure that we have a deal already before we actually vote for you to be the premier of Gauteng. We have to understand that when it comes to this thing of governing Gauteng, we already have our ducks in a row. So saying that you enter this thing in a good faith, the ANC is going to I don't want to use the word. I don't want to use the word, but it's going to screw you off. Because you voted for the ANC to have a premier. Now that they have a premier, they don't care about you. They don't care about you. They don't respect you. They are telling, they are telling people that the DA wants to, to, to bully us. Forgetting that the DA, it is the same political party that actually voted for this <laughs> premier that they have. You should you, 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 you should have cut the deal then. You should have cut the deal then. So I'm going to criticize you for this thing. The same way I criticized the ANC, I said the ANC, you were supposed to make it clear on Clause 24 that this Clause 24 is going to kick in after the government has been formed. And because this thing was not disclosed in Clause 24, it is easy for the DA to use it against you. This is why Helen Zilla was all over television and using clause 24 against you because it was not clear and none of the ANC people actually went out and said that guys let's be honest this clause 24 does not represent us so you made the same mistake that ANC made by actually assuming that these people are reasonable people are people that will actually understand that you voted with them today they have a premier because of the votes that came from the democratic alliance you actually thought that these people are good people <laughs> but they are not good people so i'm going to criticize you for that you were supposed to make sure that before you vote for panyaza Lusufi, you were supposed to make sure that panyaza once we vote for you this is how the deal is gonna go this is how the deal is gonna go 
this is the same thing that the ANC did with the DA nationally. They voted for, for, for with the ANC to have Ramaphosa as the president of the country, knowing very well that the ANC is going to vote with the DA for the DA to have the deputy speaker. You negotiate these things before you actually vote for the people. So the DA right now, they made the same mistake that the ANC made by actually assuming that entering into the negotiations with good faith, it is actually going to work. Man, this is politics. People are looking to screw you over. And right now, it looks like the ANC has actually screwed you off. In good faith from day one, there was an agreement that, uh, look, we are the biggest party. And the principle has been that if you are the biggest party, then perhaps you should look at uh, getting the leader, if you like, the, the leader role. We didn't dispute that because we understood that if you do that, then you set the tone of doing everything else, um, you know, in good faith. And this is what we were trying to do, to then show and demonstrate good faith. And they were supposed to... And guys, when you think about it, man, the ANC has been screwing the DA over, man. From nationally, the ANC has been screwing the DA over. Because you think about Clause 24, the same clause that says that ANC, if it wants to invite other political parties to join the government of national unity, they want to have to negotiate with the DA, they want to have to reach a consensus with the DA and IFP, good party and patriotic allies. But the ANC, they said that this clause is going to kick in after the government has been formed. And what happened before the government has been formed? The ANC invited a thousand political parties to come and join the government of national unity. And that means that the DA's power was actually diluted by the ANC. Ramaphosa actually diluted the power of the DA. So from nationally to provincial, the DA has been screwed over by the ANC. These people actually played you. They played you. Because you look at the rules, and tomorrow they come back and say, no, man, this was a good faith, and this thing only means that it will kick in before the government has been formed. And before Ramaphosa actually forms the government, they invite a thousand political parties, diluting the power of the DA within the government of national unity. So today, if you have a situation where Build One South Africa joins the government of national unity, do you know what that means? It means that even if the DA drops or leaves the government of national unity, the ANC can still govern the country. The ANC will still have 201 in parliament even if the DA leaves the government of national unity. So these people actually played you as the Democratic Alliance. This is one thing that the DA needs to understand, that the ANC played you. They played you from nationally, and now they are playing you provincial. To be engagements immediately from that afternoon onwards. But unfortunately, those engagements didn't take place until the very uh, next week on Wednesday uh, when we met with the, with the ANC at the, at the inauguration uh, of the president in the union buildings. And we engaged with them and we've written to them, they've written to us. You know, there's been those engagements. But as that, um, you know, um, was, we've always believed that. For us, it's not about the positions per se. Yeah. It's not about, um, you know, the blue lights or whatever the case may be. It's about what do we do to best represent the people of Gauteng and how do we form a government that can work for the people of Gauteng. Talk to me about a situation where the ANC says, take it or leave it. We're giving you three positions and what we do with the rest is not up to you. You have nothing to do with it. We'll decide whether we give it to, uh, to a PA, to an IFP. What do you do when they get to that point where they say, we've decided we're not moving from where we are, so either you take it or leave it. What is your position from that point? Well, to answer you, we have said we are willing to get up to three or up to three positions. But then that cabinet needs to be a reflection of, um, you know, a, a government of national uh, or provincial unity, meaning bring other parties into the cabinet. Don't just bring in people and then plant them in the chairperson's portfolio and say you have a government of uh, provincial unity. That's what we've been saying. So, and that we actually even put in writing. So it's there in writing to then say it's not about the positions. It's about respecting the, the, the views and the wishes of the people of Gauteng who have said none of you must even get over 35% and if that can reflect in how government is put together, we're more than happy to stay in. But if there's an insistence of keeping 80% of you know, that cabinet to one political party, which then means that all the other parties that will be coming in will just be rubber stamping what is there, then unfortunately the DA is not going to be part of that.
Is the issue of other political parties in terms of knowing? Because you said in your statement that you know the ANC has not been open in terms of which other parties they are considering bringing on into the executive. Is that an issue for the DA in terms of whether they bring the EFF, whether they bring COPE or whatever party? Is that an issue? How important is knowing who is the ANC talking to, you know, to bring on, on board? The first thing that we need to ask um, is uh, why was there a discomfort with us in the document including um, other parties? Because we're not negotiating on behalf of other parties, but we are saying in the spirit of, of, of inclusion, let's make sure that other parties are included. And today it was made very clear, they actually said it, that no, you are going to get three, we are going to keep uh, the rest to ourselves, and then we are going to give chapters and portfolios um, to other parties. And then we are saying, but these are people that are playing an oversight role. These are not people who are making decisions in the cabinet. And therefore you cannot say that you are running a government of unity if the people who are supposed to be assisting in, 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 in taking decisions, um, approving budgets um, in terms of uh, you know, running the departments and making making sure that there is flavor that is brought in there in terms of what other uh, manifesto or their manifestos are saying, that they find expression in how government works. And therefore, you can't then say that you're having a government of uh, provincial unity if all those things are excluded. So this is the base from which we were, we were coming from. It was not to then say it's the DA or nothing. It's, you know, the two of us. No, we were saying bring other people, but engage us and let's talk about how we bring them in. In fact, what we said is if you're looking at the proportionality, let's start with the two biggest parties. Yeah. You take you take six, um, or you take um, um, yeah you take six. We take five. When we bring other parties in, you lose one, we lose one. You lose one, we lose one, and then you get the proportionality so, down right. So it don't matter whether they give one of their own to the EFF, maybe. Well, they will have to do what needs to be done. That's, that's the, the, those are the positions that, they, they, that they're getting there. But what we are saying is that there needs to be an expression of what the voters you know, have said to us uh, being implemented in the, in, the, in, the, in the legislature. So if the voters have said to us, uh, you know, you cannot work on your own, you cannot uh, you know, take decisions on your own, we have to respect that. And if it means that you, um, you know, have to step back and say, I will include even that party with a, with a one-person seat, but because that's what the voters are saying to us, we'll respect that and we'll bring that in. But if you don't want to then uh, you know, listen to that and say we'll bring others uh, as a co-option, then you, you, you seriously mis, uh, misguided because then what you're doing is that you want to then continue with what the voters have said must not uh, be the case and then want everybody else to then comply. And unfortunately, the DA is not going to do that. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Man. <laughs> You know when you sit back, man, and maybe these things are happening all at once. Maybe this is the reason why we are losing our train of thought, but the ANC actually never intended on, have, on practicing this thing of proportionality. They never intended to do that. Because even nationally, the ANC gave the DA six ministerial positions with six or seven deputy ministers. But at the same time, the ANC made up other portfolios to accommodate the cadres that were supposed to be out of governance. So they broken up some other portfolios to accommodate the other cadres that were never supposed to be there in government. And these are the people that were voted by the DA. This is the president that was voted by the DA. And he did that. He did that. And right now, when you look at the cabinet and you look at how many people actually represent the ANC, and you look at how many people actually represent the DA, you can see that if this is how the cabinet was supposed to be from the start, the DA should have gotten more ministers. The DA should have gotten more ministers. But Ramaphosa behind closed doors, he, he added other portfolios so that the comrades can still come in. Then you take the matters provincially. The DA again, they vote for the NC Premier. Now that the NC Premier has been voted in, they are saying, guys, how about we look at the seats and allocate everything? With a proportion. The, the ANC says no. They say no. 
if you want us, if you want to get into governance with us, then take what we tell you to take, and we will take the rest. And the DA says, I mean, come on, that's not fair. That's not fair. At least let's bring other people to, so that this whole thing can be the, 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 the provincial, the government of provincial unit. But the NC says no. So the DA actually needs to go back and actually understand that they were outsmarted by Sagal Ramaphosa. This is something that Musi Maiman said yesterday. That these people were actually outsmarted by Sagal Ramaphosa. He still got everything that he wanted out of the deal. But right now, look at the DA. They are scrapping to get what they deserve in Khaute. And they are being screwed over by the person they voted in. The same thing happened nationally. They voted in Ramaphosa. And Ramaphosa invited a thousand political parties to dilute the power of the DA. So even if the DA gets out of government of national unity, the ANC is still going to be able to govern the country. Because they just need one party right now. I think it's Build One South Africa. And chances are the ANC is negotiating with Build One South Africa. So soon enough, we will hear the news that the Build One South Africa has actually joined the government of national unity. So meaning that even if the DA gets out, the ANC still has 201 in parliament. So right now in Gauteng, even if the DA gets out with their 22, even if the DA gets out with their 22 seats, you take the 28 seats of the ANC, you take 11 seats of EFF, you take 8 seats of Umkondo Sizwe, maybe you take 2 seats of Patriotic Alliance, take 1 seat of Razam Zanzi, and then boom, the ANC still governs Haute without the DA, despite the fact that the DA it is the one that voted for these people. Ah, guys, this is nonsense. This is nonsense. This is nonsense. Now they don't care. They don't care. They have everything they have ever wanted. They don't care. That's why they are giving the DA this treatment. They know that the DA, even if you leave, even if you leave, we don't care. Even if you leave, we don't care. We have enough numbers nationally to govern the country without you. We have enough numbers provincially to govern the country without you. Maybe the one province that the DA can actually collapse is, is KwaZulu Natal. But then again, the ANC can easily like turn on Umkondo Sizo and be like, Zuma, my guy! Msholos! <laughs> and Msholos comes with that big bag of 45%. They can easily do that. So I think right now it is fair to say that the DA has been screwed over by the ANC. Ramaphosa has actually outsmarted these people. And when Helen Zilla was busy trying to wake people up and saying, guys, these people are trying to rob us, people are saying, Helen Zilla, you need to shut up. You need to shut up, Gog Helen. Shut up, Madala, Ma Magogo. Shut up. But this is exactly what Helen Zilla was actually realizing, that no, 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 no. This thing is not holding. <laughs> this thing is not holding. So the ANC has actually managed to screw over the DA while making the DA think that they are playing an important role. But if you really look at the numbers, you can see that the ANC doesn't need the DA. The ANC doesn't need the DA as things stand. <laughs> Man, the ANC delegation indicated it had to consult with its principals. Now, yesterday in our discussion, we allowed our provinces, led by Panyaza, our chairperson, and supported at national level in the negotiating team by Pak Stau, uh, Inoko Dongwana, and David Makura to engage with the DA. 
The DA was led by Helen Zille, who said she's part of the Gauteng Caucus. So I don't know the structures of DA out there, and we are not here to question the prerogatives of other organizations. How the DA operates, how it works, we must respect their own operations. So she was part of the delegation, which engaged with our, with our comrades on the other side, together with Solim Simang, Natasha, as well as Fred Nell from the DA leadership in uh, Gauteng. And then uh, when they deadlocked, because they were discussing this deadlock in relation to the modalities of the formation of cabinet in the province, then they deferred to national leadership. In our case, uh, that national leadership and political principle is myself and the negotiating team, the DSG and other officials. And then last night at 7 o'clock, we reported to the national officials, which are led by the president of the ANC comrade, the Cyril Ramaphosa. So that is political principles. I don't know on the side of the DA what political principle will be. It will mean Zile, who was part also of the discussion. So with due respect, we respect that, because she was part of uh, the discussions, which also represented the party at national and as well as the province working with this team in the province. So that, uh, that discussion did not yield any result in terms of uh, it, it further went to a deadlock. Furthermore, notwithstanding the fact that at the point of deadlock... And guys, when you think about it, the fact that the ANC representatives in Gauteng they were so arrogant towards the DA, they were so arrogant towards the media, telling everyone how they are not going to be bullied by the DA. Do you think that these people were actually sent by the national branch of the ANC? Do you think that these people were sent by the NEC to say that we have everything that we want, go and tell them where to get off? Because... Why would someone like Lebohamma Ine, why would someone like Tiken Niza, why would these people actually go against what the NEC has actually wanted? Why would these people go against the NEC? There is no need for these people to go against the NEC. So if we were going to sit here and try to make sense of it, it looks like these people were actually sent by the NEC. To say that, guys, we don't need the DA. We know that they voted for us, but we don't need them. And the DA is not going to force us to get into negotiations with them just because they voted for us. We still have ANC, we still have MK Party, we still have Razem Zanzi, we still have Patriotic Alliance. And all of these political parties will happily work with, happily work with us without the DA. And this will be a dream come true for the EFF and MK Party to actually kick out the DA. This will be a dream come true again for Patriotic Alliance to kick out the DA because Patriotic Alliance, Gaten McKenzie, he hates the DA. So why would these people actually go against the, 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 the NEC of the NC? They didn't go against the NEC. They were actually sent by the NEC. They were actually sent by the NEC. Uh, the ANC then indicated at that point that it was to engage uh, with the highest structures and the political principles on uh, what then becomes the way forward. The DA nonetheless proceeded to issue a, a public statement indicating that uh, uh, the negotiations are not closed and that uh, they are still open to engagement, uh, but nonetheless they also tabulated their own uh, point of disagreement in terms of the formation of uh, the provincial cabinet. Uh, this indeed was regrettable that we could not reach an agreement uh, yesterday and proceed with the formation of cabinet, which Banyanza have now postponed twice uh, and so on.
We will come back to that as well when you engage with him uh, as the ANC provincial leader in Gauté. We are unable to accede to the DA's latest proposals, as we have indicated throughout the negotiations. Man. The DA is not the only party we are negotiating with on the setting up of the Gauteng government of provincial unity. To demonstrate our... We don't have a choice because... I don't know, guys. It went back, but I'm going to try to find where it was. I think it was on somewhere like 10 minutes, I think. That's not a picnic there. The people shall govern. And if you read the principles of the Freedom Charter under the people shall govern, it respects the power of the people through vote because we're disfranchised. So the vote have spoken. The vote said to the ANC, you've got 40%. You've got 34 in Gaute. DA, you've got 28%. We don't govern. If we governed, we wouldn't be having this press conference. By the day the president was inaugurated, the following day, cabinet would have been announced. We had to take time to start to talk to people that we even never thought would talk to them. Others you don't know, the name of the party probably, who's the leader, <laughs> and then you've got to find them, where they are, how they are thinking, do they think about the country, talks about talks, you sell the idea. And then others, when we talked to them, they said no. They came, others, with this blackness and a fake liberation movement concept that's fake, because when they were supposed to understand this politics at a given point in time, they didn't. But South Africans have given us this outcome. And that's where we are as the ANC. And it stands to be seen what this JNU is going to do. Politically speaking, it can be a formidable force, or in the process, others may move away from it. But it won't collapse. One thing for sure, it won't collapse. Others may decide that this thing is not working for us. We have tested for a few years. Ah, uh -uh, it's not working for us. We are leaving. You get what I mean? But they will be replaced. So at the end of the day, GNU is constituted with the ANC in majority working with others, not outright. And that's what it is. We've got mechanisms which is what now, as I conclude, how we are going to deal with matters. Remember, the statement of intent does not replace the Constitution. That's what is important. The statement of intent does not replace how cabinet functions. You know when people were being sworn in today, others cannot even pronounce conscientiously. <laughs> very difficult. Can, 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 yes. uh, it's very difficult. I had a difficulty myself when I became the deputy minister for the first time to pronounce that word conscientiously. But that oath is loaded. Do as you wish, you act like you are not following that oath. That's why Justice Zondo was saying, say it in English, if not in Corsa, and you sign for it. Because that's not a picnic there. A minister must be minister. That's not a picnic. Deputy minister must... No, guys, man. I want to where Fikil Maluna was talking about the matter of the DA and how... ...should belong to the ANC. But... ...and the need to advance the national interest. The president then shall, in constituting the executive, take into account the electoral outcomes. Helen Zille bring into this, when you talk about seats, proportionality. Proportionality. And then says that in terms of proportionality, we are then being undermined. But leave that it may be. In the document, we don't not even extrapolate, extrapolate, uh, extrapolate. proportionality and, and analyze it in detail. We talk about the principle of inclusiveness. 
we don't talk about proportionality that you'll get five, six, seven, eight. If you bring that in the negotiations, you can. But we made it very clear that to us, inclusiveness means to talk to everybody. But these are things that we'll share with you if you want to run a show on Netflix about what happened behind the talks. Um, <laughs> so basically the ANC is going to do the same thing that it did to DA in Gauteng. Just replace them with other political parties. The same thing that they did to DA nationally, they, this is the same thing that they're going to do to the DA in Gauteng. So we'll explain that. But the most important thing, that is our under, that is clause 16, right? And then 17 says, whilst recognizing the president's prerogative to appoint members of the executive, such appointments shall be done in consultation with leaders of respective parties of the members considered for appointment. Now, president exercises prerogative. He talks to John Hestazen about Banyaza is going to constitute government in Gauteng. He will talk to leaders of political parties in Gauteng. That, look, and then they will, they will talk about posts. And then that party probably will say we want one post, uh, this and that and that. And then they look into that, they, they engage at their level. Because the prerogative is now constitutional. But we said in terms of the statement of intent, the president will do that uh, after consultation and so on. So that is, that is the statement of intent. It's a public document that everybody have actually read. Have we given political parties uh, positions uh, that are anti-freedom charter? Now, all positions should belong to the ANC. But they would have belonged to the ANC if the ANC won outright majority. So which position is not the position of the Freedom Charter? All of them. 32 ministers, ministries, is it correct? Belong to the Freedom Charter. So the question when you constitute GNU at the government level, to an extent that you'll say this does not belong to us, it belongs to the Freedom Charter and all of that. Which one is going to be that? Because all of them are important, including Gaten McKenzie's position. They're very important. Sports, arts, and culture, it's very important. Social cohesion, nation building, it's a big problem. One politician said to me, and one politician once criticized me and said, hey, Zuma Unyatsitem. Ufile ministry waru uralu kedi dangari liva nanya all of that. But anyway, guys, if you don't it's just made it clear, man. Like <laughs> the ANC, they don't have to abide by the statement of intent that they signed nationally. So when it when when it goes to provincially, the premiers can actually do as they please. So this is exactly what Panyazal Sufi understands. Panyazal Sufi understands that no one can actually force me to work with the DA. The ANC still has options outside of the DA. So even with Ramaphosa, if Ramaphosa was able to call other political parties in the government of national unity before he calls the DA, this is exactly the same thing that Ramaphosa was going to do. But because the, the, the things were actually different nationally from how they are provincially, Ramaphosa had to make it look like him and the DA are actually the partners, whereas he knew that at the end of the day, he's going to dilute the power of the DA. So now it's provincially, Banyazal Sufi doesn't need the DA. He can work with other political parties. He, they, like, they don't care that the DA voted for them, essentially. They don't care that the DA voted for them, essentially. So this is the same thing that has been happening. So this is why I'm saying that the DA, you're going to have to go back, man, to, to, to the drawing board. The ANC screwed you over. Guys, so please tell me what you think. Go to the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button. And the most important part is subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabasa. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.